Get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. Get ready, get ready for a tea time and filter with your girl loving tea. Spilling all this hot tea on this podcast street. So get ready, get ready for this pipe and hot tea. From tea time and filter with your girl loving tea. Hey, tea sippers. I hope everybody's doing good. Welcome to another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely Tea. And I got my girl, Emily, with me in the house. Emily, say what's up to the people. Hey, everybody. Hey, y'all. Chad, Emily got a new microphone, so you can't tell her nothing. No, you can't tell me anything at all. I feel so fancy. I feel like I work at a uh, radio place or something. A radio radio place, radio station. <laughs> I know that's right. So it is a lot going on right now, especially with this weather. Oh, my goodness. It has been nuts in the Discord. Um, for the past two weeks, people were being warned about extreme weather. I know myself, I had posted a message on December 8th. And I was telling everybody, you know, please start getting generators. I was even telling the newbies go into the prepper room because a lot of the power grids have been getting affected around the country. People are purposely sabotaging the power grids, shooting at them and all types of crazy stuff. So I was posting stuff in the prep room like, you know, in case you have no power, you're going to want a fully, you know, like a battery operated or something you can that's already plugged in and charged that you can use to keep going that can sustain you for the next day two, three days until the power comes back. Mm -hmm. And then the following week, we hear about this huge storm that's coming. So on December 18th, I had posted in the weather room. I said, happy Sunday. I hope you all are bracing yourselves. Have your backup generators. This could bring down some of the grids. Many states are about to experience a horrible, a horrible cold freeze that they have not seen since the 80s. So there was a lot of warning. Little old me was even saying stuff on my YouTube live. Make sure you guys have generators. There's a big storm coming. Um, Ryan Hall, y'all, he was talking about the weather. Tons of prepper channels were, news channels were. But a lot of people just either were not paying attention got complacent or just didn't have the means. But what happened in Buffalo and in a lot of cities right now is just really, really heartbreaking and sad. So what yeah. we're going to do is go ahead and watch some videos first. So we're going to watch some videos, some news clips about the things that are going on, not just in Buffalo, but around the country, because I want people to be really aware of this stuff um, because it could save your life. Like we, we can't play anymore of these games. Like there are real people dying in real situations that could possibly be prevented. So let's go ahead and start with this video here. 57 people. It is still scary and dangerous out there with rescue crews in the Northeast focusing on clearing piles of snow that trapped people in their homes and cars. You've got the National Weather Service now warning of dangerously cold temperatures along with intense wind chills. And that all might mean trouble for anybody still trying to fly this week. Forecasters say a lot of the eastern U.S. is going to be in a deep freeze throughout tonight. You see it there on the map. Temperatures are set to rebound tomorrow, but this storm has been deadly in 13 states, from Colorado to New York, where people killed have been found in their cars, even in snowbanks. And that was the case in western New York, a kind of ground zero for this winter catastrophe. Look at this. Look at some of these images you're seeing here, right? That is a house completely encased in snow. The New York governor calling this an all hands on deck situation today in Buffalo. You can see all the cars abandoned on the roads. People just left them. The area just paralyzed to the point where even some of the rescue crews needed rescuing. And then you got some people apparently trying to take advantage of the situation. Look at this video of somebody breaking into a liquor store and robbing it right at the height of the storm on Christmas Eve. The Buffalo mayor saying. These people are the lowest of the low. Dasha Burns is joining us now from New York. Dasha, um, the number of people killed by the storm just in New York alone is up to more than two dozen, 27 people at least. There's still a driving ban. You cannot get out and drive on the road in some parts of the state, even though right now, right, the snow has stopped. People do need to get out. They've got to get their medication, go get to the doctor, whatever it is. Walk us through the landscape at this point. 
Well, Hallie, that's a tough balance to strike, right? People need to get out, but at the same time, there is really urgent work that needs to be done by these rescue workers, and that is why authorities are so serious about this travel ban. Now, there is a hotline you can call and let me underscore, it is for emergencies only. Emergencies, meaning if you need uh, urgent dialysis treatment, if you need life-saving medication, rescue workers can get that to you if you call uh, the hotline. But otherwise, uh, authorities are pleading in most of Erie County, especially that Buffalo area, to stay inside, stay off the roads, because there are still people trapped in cars, people that are uh, trapped in homes that really need uh, help urgently. And if people are on the roads, that's really hampering those efforts because because not only do you have folks driving around that shouldn't be, but you've got abandoned cars, like you mentioned. You have down power lines. You still have areas that are impassable. And you've got a lot of folks without power right now as well. And workers are trying to restore that power as quickly as possible, plowing the areas that need to be plowed, that uh, workers need to get access to. So there is a massive effort happening right now. But people really need to try to hunker down, again, unless you have one of those emergencies where you can call right. uh, the hotline in the Erie area, but otherwise, stay home. Let folks get that that really urgent stuff done uh, and, and dig out from under this mess. Hallie. And you okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and um, share with you the situation that went down with this young nurse. She's 22 years old, originally from Charlotte, North Carolina, but she moved to Buffalo, New York. So let's go ahead and listen to her story. We had posted it earlier on Instagram as well. <laughs> Over the weekend, during this blizzard in Western New York alone, that includes a young woman who grew up in Charlotte. WCNC Charlotte's Jesse Pierre talking with the family of 22-year-old Andel Taylor. As you can imagine, they are devastated. Andel was getting off work Friday when she got stuck in the snow. Her family say she made several calls for help, but nothing. The next day, she was found, but it was too late. It's like I, I want to wake up from this dream, you know? She was just so sweet. A Charlotte family mourning the loss of Endel Taylor, a nursing assistant who was trapped in the winter storm after work Friday afternoon in Buffalo, New York. And then around 12, she texts us the last video um, saying that the snow was basically by her stomach. That was the last time Tamisha Brown says she heard from her sister. She was in a position where she was comfortable inside the car when they saw her body. She had on scrubs and Crocs. She didn't have a coat on, so she didn't freeze. Loved ones described Endel as a protector and a caregiver who moved to New York to go to school and help her dad. She went all the way to Buffalo to take care of her father. Mm -hmm. And no one was there as far as the rescue people to, to help her. Her family in New York say they did all they could to get to Andel, but couldn't make it through all of the snow. Her body was found by a stranger Saturday night. He was brave. He was loyal. He was always there. Anything we needed, if, if, if sister had it, we could always depend on her. So it's really hard for us, like really hard. She was the youngest one, but she, she had the oldest soul. And Dell's family say the same stranger who found her had a truck, drove them to her so that they could bring Endel to the hospital. Endel would have been 23 next month. In Southwest Charlotte, Jesse Pierre, WCNC Charlotte. All right, and we have one more video here. Flooded floors now frozen at the Wade Park Apartments on Cleveland's east side. It was just flooding everywhere. Water was flooding from everywhere. They said the pipes had busted. Slick floors in the main lobby, hallways, and right outside apartment doors. Well, what about the people that's elderly that's not functional? Like, how can you get around all this? Richard Pinson took us inside his apartment where water was dripping everywhere in his bathroom, kitchen, living room, and bedroom. He's one of many residents who told us they are frustrated, saying the Cuyahoga Metropolitan Housing Authority isn't addressing the problem at their property that they started on Friday. I feel like it should be flooded with people over here that's trying to resolve the problem. Residents spending Christmas Day without heat, some saying they had to use their appliances to stay warm, knowing it's dangerous, but left helpless. 
survival tactics, you know, trying to keep warm, you know, while we're in here. That's all we can do. The many issues causing safety concerns. Tenants telling 3 News they kept calling management, but no one is getting back to them and nothing is being done. It's a big property. It's a lot of people in here and it's, it's a lot of people up under CMHA safety, they roof that they, they need to be concerned about in times like this. All right. So mm -hmm. that is what's going on. It is a mess. What do you think about all of this, Emily? I, it's just really a flood of emotions because I see the, the young girl who passed away, and that is just heartbreaking, seeing her family break down and cry. It makes me emotional just watching that. Um, and then you see the, the next video of the people in the apartments and it makes you so angry, I guess, like frustrated because I understand like there's only so much people can do, but also at the same time, why is not more being done? I know sometimes it's a matter of getting things out. That's a really big apartment complex. And I know that you can prepare for certain things, but then also sometimes if you don't have electricity, if you have no way to, I don't even know how you would, I guess you could work a generator there. I don't know, but it, it's just a flood of emotions that come through frustration um, it's very, uh, not irony, but it, it's just a, a lot of different emotions. <laughs> yeah. You know, the thing that's really sad, like I remember two years ago, right. Or was it a year ago? Me and Jana, Lady J, we had did the video. We did a podcast about the whole storm, the winter storm in Texas, mm -hmm. how, you know, everybody's pipes were breaking and, you know, things were flooding and yeah. we were giving advice, like, you know, people have to really start preparing and taking things seriously. And we were accused by so many people at that time of prep shaming. I didn't even oh, know. Oh, yeah, I remember that. that. Was. Remember that? I didn't even I know, didn't know what either. that was. <laughs> I'm like, we're prep shaming because we're telling people that you have to, you got to understand they're not coming to save you. Exactly. They're not. Nobody is going to come and help you if your car is abandoned on the side of the road. If you're lucky, you might have good Samaritans. But as, if you're depending on the city, on the government in any way, shape or form, they are not going to come and help you. No. And that's what we we're trying to get people to realize that you can't, you know, if it, if it comes to you buying the latest outfit or the latest pair of Jordans or the handbag, that same money that you would spend on that item, also spend it on preparedness stuff. Get mm -hmm. a generator. Yes, it may cost a few hundred dollars. Yes, you're not going to need it every day. But, you know, you know it's there. You test it every few months to make sure it's working. Because, again, it's just like insurance in case you need it. You know yeah. it's there. It's very and valuable. Yeah, exactly. And it's like people were getting so offended. And, it, you know, so after that, I was like, I'm done. You know, I'm not you know, talk my prep stuff to the public no more. I'll just keep it in the discord. And that's what we do in there. We talk about a lot of stuff like this, you know, preparedness, growing food, all types of things to help edify people. Because at this point, like we're saying, nobody's coming to help you. And people need to understand that these weather phenomenons are going to get worse and worse. Yes, it most definitely. I remember, um, not this winter that had just passed, but I guess we're technically in winter now, but last year. So mm -hmm. it was technically last winter. That was when we, um, my work was closed for like a week. Everybody was snowed in. We had uh, an obnoxious amount of snow. There was rolling blackouts that just a lot of Southern state. Well, I'll just speak of where I'm at, but we're not used to getting a lot of snow here. If you get a half inch snow, typically everything's shut down for the day. There's just not a lot of infrastructure. They don't prepare the roads. A lot of the homes aren't built for extreme cold temperatures and things like that. So mm -hmm. that was like this huge ordeal. And I remember them being like, oh, this is a once in a blah, blah thing. And then now here we are a year later and we're at record low temperatures. I can't remember the last time that it was two degrees in Memphis. And that is very, very cold here. Most people are not mm -hmm. used to those type of temperatures. Their homes aren't used to those temperatures. They don't know, you know, leave your faucets running, leave a drip, stuff like that. They do rolling blackouts. Um, there's a lot of stuff that happens. People lose power. They have no access to heat. They don't have access to roads. All the stores are closed. Right now, we're still under a boil warning. A lot of people are being told to only use water for essential needs. So if you don't have, it, it's very difficult right now to find bottled water. 
Mm. It sold out everywhere because people didn't prepare. And now everybody's running and going to buy it. And then, of course, you know, they're stockpiling it and they're price gouging. And it's just a bunch of nonsense or excuse me, nonsense. But nonetheless, a lot of people weren't prepared. And then the few people that are trying to just get out and get it can't because it's just gone. Yeah. And that's very interesting that you said that because during that winter, the one where they had the big Texas freeze, they mm -hmm. called that a once in a generation because, you know, that was, you know, the grids were freezing and power lines were coming down. And then it's very interesting that this same storm, when they were first reporting on it six, seven days ago, they were saying that it's a once in a generation winter storm. Yeah, I'm not buying that. <laughs> yeah. And over and they were saying it six days ago. 280 million Americans are under a winter watch. And that winter watch started here in Minnesota. Um, and it kind of just spread all through the Midwest. But I was shocked because most of the people in the Telegraph group are like in the South. So mm -hmm. when you guys were like in just the single digits, that's shocking because that's Minnesota weather typically. You know, yeah. so while y'all are at two, <laughs> I'm up here like negative 10 degrees, you know? Yeah, that's cold. And I even most people, even outside of just like us not being I'm very congested right now. If you can't tell, I got a runny nose. Most people are sick. A lot of colds, a lot of viruses, stuff like that are going around because people are not used to this extremely cold weather. Like to mm -hmm. us, if it's 20 degrees, that's freezing. That's cold. We ain't, you know, it happens. That's winter weather to us. But I mean, last year around this time, I want to say it was 60 degrees. So, mm. you know, it does get cold down here, but once you you get into the single digits, just we don't have the infrastructure for that. And another thing that confuses me is these rolling blackouts. I mean, I, I get why they say, but maybe there's something I'm missing. I don't understand the point in them. If there's thousands of people already without power from like damage from power lines and stuff, why are they doing the rolling blackouts? Usually why they're doing the rolling blackouts is to basically conserve energy. Once they fix it, then they might let the other neighborhood, like in another section of town, allow them to use power for a while. Then they'll turn it off and then allow another neighborhood to use that power for a while. So that's why they call them rolling blackouts, because sometimes it's blackouts that they control just so the grid doesn't get so overwhelmed that everybody loses power and then nobody can have anything. Okay, so whenever there are you know, because this is something I've always wondered, because here we get roll. If it gets really cold, usually rolling blackouts are a pretty common thing. So I'm like, there's so many businesses that are closed right now. And then there's already people that have lost power just from damage. So I'm like, what, who are the people that's using more power to where they need to preserve the energy? Yeah, they're going to be able. That. Yeah, they, they determine that. And that's the thing right now. The the grid right now is under so much stress anyways. It's all right. falling apart. You know, then you have these lunatics that are purposely shooting, you know what I'm saying, these grids and these um, transformer stations. I mean, it's really scary. Like these power stations have been under attack for literally the whole month of December. Because I know when I started reporting on it on Discord, that was on the 8th of December. And since then, it's like every other week, some power station is getting shot up. Nobody knows who's doing it. That none of them have been arrested. But then they'll be like, oh, 17,000 families are without any power in, you know, Seattle, Washington. I'm just throwing out a name. Mm -hmm. But it's been so many different cities that are now... Um, dealing with these power outages on top of it being natural power outages from like storms and stuff like that. New attacks highlighting the vulnerability of the U.S. power grid. On Sunday, Christmas Day, three power stations in Washington state were broken into, two of them vandalized. As a result, Tacoma Public Utilities and Puget Sound Energy reported 14,000 customers were left in the dark. Officials posting a message urging customers to report outages. You think nothing of when you turn on a light switch, but whenever you haven't had power for a few days and you turn on a light switch, it's, it, it means it's just everything. The attacks come after at least five power substations were reportedly attacked in Washington and Oregon last month. And we have confirmed that this was malicious intent, this was no accident. 
and two more in North Carolina earlier this month. The targeted shootings at power substations left entire towns in Moore County without power for days. The local sheriff saying Duke Energy crews saw someone shooting from a vehicle near a power plant, then speeding off. Shell casings at the two sites recovered. Search warrants issued in the case, but it wasn't clear if they were for a person or people in the area. Ever investigator working on this case, state, local and federal know what you want and that's answers. Many substations are vulnerable because they're in remote areas and are mostly unattended. As for the Washington state attacks on Christmas Day, a statement from the Pierce County Sheriff says deputies are conducting the initial investigation. We do not have any suspects in custody. It is unknown if there are any motives or if this was a coordinated attack on the power systems. One former regulator said he can't recall another month with as many physical threats made to the U.S. electric grid. And a recent Homeland Security bulletin warned that domestic extremists have been developing plans to disrupt the grid since at least 2020. Yo, what's up? Baby, let's go. Hey, tea sippers To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.